death and crowned with glory now you reign in heaven death could not hold you down by resurrection power we live in lives that he is risen redeem love in us must show a dying world the life of Christ and his salvation salvation hear us shout it out we believe you are our freedom the highway to the father's heart we believe you're our salvation hear us shout it out Welcome to St Wilfrid's Church Online. It's great to be back after our summer break. Over these next three weeks, we're looking at what it means to be church. Today, we see how together we are God's house. It's us, not the building that really counts. Next week, we are focusing on St Paul's famous analogy of the church being Jesus' body. And then we'll be seeing how Jesus calls us to be his workforce, his arms, eyes, arms and feet to the world around us. In a moment, we'll be singing our first song, Here For You. But first, let's take a moment to be quiet and then I'll pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus that you are with us today. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit, we pray. May we, your church, grow in love for you, each other, and for those who don't yet know you. May each of us be inspired and equipped to play the part you are calling us, the part you're calling us to play in your mission to Cowplane and beyond. Amen. Let your breath come from heaven, 
let our shout. Let our shout be our anthem. Your ring out in the sky. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your word be the anthem. Let us dance. Let's take some time now to ask God to forgive us for the wrong things we've done or maybe the things that we've not done that we should have. We are sorry for the times we have seen wrong in others without recognising how much is also wrong in us. Lord, forgive us and help us. We are sorry for the things we have said and done that hurt others. Lord, forgive us and help us. We are sorry for the times we have not listened to the cries of those who are poor or who suffer injustice. Lord, forgive us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen.
Come like a rushing wind, clothe us with power from on high. Now set the captive free, leave us abandoned to your praise. Lord, let your glory. Let's pray together the special prayer for today. Almighty God, you search us and know us. May we rely on you in strength and rest on you in weakness, now and in all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let's declare our faith in our wonderful God. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Helen will now bring us today's Bible reading and then Steve, Maria, Sabrina, Andy and Elaine will then share their thoughts and reflections. Good morning everybody. Today's reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. The Living Stone and the Holy Nation. 
Rid yourselves then of all evil, no more lying or hypocrisy or jealousy or insulting language. Be like newborn babies, always thirsty for the pure spiritual milk, so that by drinking it you may grow up and be saved. As the scripture says, you have found out for yourselves how kind the Lord is. Come to the Lord, the living stone rejected by man as worthless, but chosen by God as valuable. Come as living stones and let yourselves be used in building the spiritual temple where you will serve as holy priests to offer spiritual and acceptable sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ. For the scriptures say, I chose a valuable stone, which I am placing as the cornerstone in Zion. And whoever believes in him will never be disappointed. This stone is of great value for you that believe. But for those who do not believe, the stone which the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. And another scripture says, this is the stone that will make people stumble, the rock that will make them fall. They stumble because they did not believe in the word which was God's will for them. But when you are chosen race, the king's priests, the holy nation, God's own people, chosen to proclaim the wonderful acts of God, who called you out of darkness into his own marvellous light. At one time you were not God's people, but now you are his people. At one time you did not know God's mercy, but now you have received his mercy. Amen. When I read today's reading, the verses that stood out for me were verse 5, where it talks about living stones and Jesus being the cornerstone of the church. And I was thinking about our, our church, I was thinking about St Wilfrid's and the building. Um, we're very blessed, aren't we? We have a beautiful building there in St Wilfrid's, but that's what it is. It's a building. It's a building made out of stone and mortar, um, bricks, metal, glass, wood. In fact, those those windows, they're, they're pretty special, aren't they? They're stained glass windows, but it's a building. And for quite a few months now, we've been denied access to it. And even now, access is limited, isn't it? And it made me think about what church is about. Because even without the building, we've been able to meet. We've been able to meet in meetings like this one today. We've been able to receive spiritual food and we've been able to share something that's special. And I think this experience has been something that's very unique. Um, COVID-19 has brought some rubbish, hasn't it? A lot of suffering and pain and discomfort. But maybe it's brought some blessings. And for us, maybe the blessing is here, here and now. It's allowed us to be living stones. Over the years, I've heard sermons preached on this subject, and words to make us think and ponder and, and, and to be more aware of our part within the church of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. But that's all, that's all it was, words. Um, sometimes those words just washed over us. Sometimes they sank in and uh, would go home with a thought in our mind. Um, I, I, wrote, I, I wrote things down in church. Um, when I started coming to church, I started writing things down because there were things that were being said that I didn't understand. So I'd go home and look them up. And I think there was a little bit of me that was hoping that I was going to catch Ian out. But I never have done yet. Um, or maybe I have. <laughs> Maybe I've. But anyway, uh, uh, this was one of the quotes from a sermon. It says, people can see the building, but can they see the church? Um, and at the moment, people can see the building. Um, can they see the church unless they come online with us on a Sunday or unless one of us enters their life? Um, that's a thought. So I think... This experience has been a special one. It's allowed us the opportunity to, to draw closer to God and benefit from it. Um, another part of the reading that was 
that made me think was uh, at the start at the start of the reading it talks about spiritual milk being fed with spiritual milk and how the spiritual milk strengthens us and I was thinking about um, physical food I was thinking about physical food and spiritual food and, and it maybe they're similar I don't know um, and I was thinking about times when I was I've been hungry now my mum would tell me off for this because she, she'll tell me I've never been hungry and I guess she's right there's places in the world where people actually die of hunger it's hard to imagine isn't it actually dying of hunger um, and there's also places in the world where people die of spiritual hunger there's places where the Christian church doesn't exist or it exists undercover anyway it's places where it's not allowed to exist so we're very fortunate we're very fortunate to to be able to just walk around and enter a church or go online and join in a service my final thought today is that whilst we're living stones and attending church and being fed spiritually the main stone of our church is Jesus Christ. And we all know this, don't we? We all know um, that back in history, when houses were built, back at the time of Christ anyway, that the houses, they were built differently to how they're built now. And the house, the building started off with the cornerstone and then the house built out from there. And the cornerstone was what was used to make the house square and thus structurally safe and sounds if the cornerstone was out of place the building would fall down well we're, we've been blessed our cornerstone is in place it remains and it will always remain and um yes it's, it's been a an interesting reading today and i thank ian for the opportunity of sharing these thoughts and i thank jesus christ for the blessings he gives us and i say this in the name of jesus christ Amen. According to this week's reading, it has been written that we are the building stones of the church, or at least that's how it came across to me. But not just any old cold stone, but living, breathing stone. What does living, breathing stone mean? Well, to me, it means putting my trust in something that I cannot see putting my faith in something I cannot feel, understanding that I cannot change the world, however much I would like to. But I can choose what I can change about me, to be more like a living, breathing stone of God's church. How to do this, however, isn't easy or pretty. Unfortunately for you and me, Jesus never seemed to choose the softer option. But... That is how we can grow closer in our relationship with God, because when we are building, we all need a firm foundation. We are the chosen people of God, therefore we should trust him. When we are chosen, we become part of a holy nation, a royal priesthood, people belonging to God. So rejoice in the Lord our God, for he has chosen us. In today's Bible reading, Peter talks about how we are building a spiritual house or a church brick by brick and how we're all called to be part of this this church this building we're all individual bricks if you like that builds up this spiritual house and i think that's a really good message i certainly really appreciated it because i think sometimes i think that maybe my contribution to building god's kingdom is a little bit insignificant it's not very big i'm not doing anything massive or amazing and therefore my contribution's not really worth anything when I was thinking this, I thought of the Apollo space program and the story that, that came out of that. President Kennedy, who initiated this whole amazing effort to put people on the moon, was, was visiting one day one of the space centres. And amongst all the rocket building and engineering and science that was going on, he saw a man sweeping up. So he politely went to talk to this man and asked him what he did, expecting to be told that he was a cleaner. But this man looked at him and very proudly he said, Mr. President, I'm helping to put a man on the moon. I think that's incredible because when you think about the Apollo space program, if, if you were to be asked who was the most important person in it, you would probably say Neil Armstrong, the first person to land on the moon. 
And he made an amazing contribution himself. He piloted a lunar lander down that no one had ever been done before. He stepped foot on the moon. But of course, his contribution, as, as, as important and as noteworthy as it is, was no more, if you like, as important as this guy who was sweeping up. And I think when we go back to thinking about Peter saying that we're building up brick by brick, we realise that all of our contributions are so important. Even if it's smiling at someone, taking the time to stop and listen to someone who's having a bad day, having a little contribution, contributing towards a charity, sponsoring someone, all of those things build up God's kingdom brick by brick. And I think that's really important to remember, that our contributions are important. But I also think that Peter talks later about how we're invited to, as he puts it, join a royal priesthood. We're all invited by God to be part of this. And that made me think as well, because that's quite amazing when you think about it, that the, amaz that the creator, God's the creator of the universe, is asking us to be part of his work. And you think, well, why would he? I certainly think, well, why would he do that? Surely there's better people around than me. I was reading about in um, a sort of journal about how Someone was, when they were a child, always used to do carpentry with their father. And they were thinking, well, you know, surely I was just getting in the way. But then they realised that their father wanted them to be there, not because they were getting in the way, but because their father loved them and wanted them to be a part of it, of course. And then going back to the Apollo space programme, there was a, an astronaut, Jim Irwin, who landed on the moon on Apollo 15, which was about four missions in to the Apollo space programme. And he talked about how he was deeply affected by the, seeing the size of the Earth. Like a lot of the astronauts, he looked up in the, the sky of the moon and he saw the vastness of space and the way the amount of stars that you can see from the moon. I guess you just can't see, you can't get a scale of that from the Earth in the same way. He realised how vast space was and then he saw how small the Earth was hanging in the sky, much like we look at the moon up in the night sky up on the Earth. And he said you could put your thumb up and just block out the Earth just with your thumb it was that small that, that insignificant if you like but then something struck him in the same way i guess as that that person realizing why his father wanted him to be part of his carpentry and he said he said though the earth was very small the size of a marble and i thought if it's that small then how small am i just a speck in the universe but significant significant enough that god would love me and create me and love me enough to touch my life. So I suppose what St Peter's saying, or what the message there to me certainly says, is that in the same way as that boy was involved in this carpentry, and, and this astronaut realised how important God's love was, despite the vastness, or in fact because of the vastness of the universe, in the same way maybe that's what I need to remember, and what, what we can all maybe remember, is that we're called to be part of this building of this spiritual house, this church, brick by brick, not because we can make a massive contribution, but because God values and loves us and wants to be part us to be part of that work. Good morning, everybody. In the passage read this morning, we hear about buildings and how they're built. I've never given much thought to this, but now being married to a builder, I've started to take notice. The way buildings are built are now very much more on my radar with phrases like, just look at that brickwork pattern. Whoever built it is a good bricklayer. And the roof line on that isn't quite right. There's a dip in the middle. I now appreciate a well-built wall. Coming from up north around the hills of the Lancashire Dales, there's lots of dry stone walls. I'm sure you've seen them. They are incredible structures. So picture a team of labourers preparing to build a dry stone wall. It might be the replacement of a wall that's fallen, or it could be a brand new construction. But the labourers pick up each stone, deciding where to place it, asking, is this the right shape, the right weight, or even the right colour for where they want to place it? And these are left in the good pile. But every now and then, though, they find one that's been broken in such a way that it's too crooked to use in a wall. The ones they cast aside. The rejects. But then the master builder comes along and sorts through the rejects. He finds a stone that's just the right shape to form the cornerstone of the foundation. This is the stone that the rest of the wall will be aligned with. It's a critical stone in the foundation because everything else gets its alignment from it. The reject becomes the most valuable member. 
So first of all, what's the foundation that we're talking about here, the cornerstone of this spiritual house? Well, it's Jesus Christ, isn't it? Jesus was rejected by those he came to speak to, by the leaders of his own people, in fact. He was put to death by them, but God had chosen him to form the foundation of this new spiritual house. He's the living stone that'll begin the process of building a living temple for God. And he wasn't just chosen, he was precious in God's sight. He appeared to be a reject, but in fact he was the most precious treasure you could imagine. But notice this reading isn't just about Jesus. It's about us too. What does the writer say? He says, come to him, come to Jesus. Why? Why are we called to come to Jesus? We're called to come to him so that we too can become part of the spiritual house of God, the church of God. He describes us as living stones as well, just like Jesus. This is a church that will have a life of its own, that will grow and grow in strength and stature. But there's something else in this picture of a new temple of God. We discover that we actually have parts to play in the growth of this temple. First of all, we are the building blocks that form the structure of the building. But the church is nothing if it doesn't have you and me to build it up. You may have seen the old poster on a church notice board. CH, blank, blank, CH. It's nothing without you, are in it. There'd certainly be fewer problems if we didn't have any people in the church, that's for sure. But then it wouldn't be much of a church, would it? In fact, it wouldn't be a church at all. No, the church is the people. We are the living stones being built into a living church, a place where people can come to encounter God. Our task as building blocks of the temple is to bind together in unity, to create a strong and stable structure. We are living stones, which means we need to keep growing, not in size, but in strength, in maturity, so that the bonds we have with one another become stronger and stronger as time goes on. But having said that, we need to be careful about how we understand all this. It's all too easy to hear what I just said and still think of a physical building. Where is this place where people come to encounter God? Is it our building known as St Wilfrid's Church? Well, it might be when we're meeting together. Our meeting to praise God, to hear his word, to give him our corporate worship is a place where people will meet God. But equally, people should encounter God when they encounter us. Did you see the next bit in the passage after we are described as living stones being built into a spiritual house? Well, it then goes on to say that we are to be a holy priesthood. What? I hear you saying I'm never going to be a priest. But when you understand that priests are those who stand between God and the people, they're the ones who bring God's word to the people on behalf of God and who offer sacrifices to God on behalf of the people. So one of our roles as God's people is to bring God's word to those around us, to share the gospel with people, to introduce God to those who don't yet know him. That happens at all sorts of levels, of course. During this time of lockdown, I'm sure you have all been priests. You were a priest when you took the shopping to a friend who was shielding. You were a priest when you made those cakes for your neighbour. You were a priest every time you walked out of your door and smiled and said good morning to that stranger walking past. And the other thing that priests do is the offering of sacrifices. Not the sort of sacrifices that were offered in Solomon's temple, hundreds of sheep and cattle with blood pouring everywhere. No, what are the sacrifices that we are called to offer? They are described in this passage as spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 
And one of the things that we can do as Christians is offer to pray for those we encounter. This is a spiritual sacrifice to God, isn't it? And I don't think I've ever had someone refuse when I've offered to pray for them. And it's a priestly act, isn't it? What's more, it's something that any one of us can do. So we're called to be a royal priesthood. And if we're to be this and to be built into this new temple of God, then we must be holy. But how are we to do that? Well, let's look back to the beginning of our passage. There we read, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy and all slander. So that's the first step. We must rid ourselves of those things that will trip us up and make sure they don't act as a blockage to the working out of God in our lives. The message translation of this verse puts it this way, make a clean sweep. So we should take an audit of our lives. There's that saying we should remember here. If you were on trial for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence found to convict you? Think about that. Secondly, the next thing we're instructed to do is to crave spiritual milk. Now, Julie knows that newborn babies crave milk rather too often at times, I expect, Julie. But if we feed on the pure spiritual milk of God's word, then we'll grow up mature and whole in God, having tasted that the Lord is good. I wonder, are there times when you forget what it's like to experience the goodness of God? Perhaps when life gets too hectic or where there are particular pressures on you at home or at work or in your family. Do you perhaps sometimes even forget that God is there? I think Peter here is saying, don't forget. Remember how good it is to experience God's love. For me, it's like the taste of chocolate. One taste is never enough. And just the thought of it makes my mouth water. And that's the sort of feeling the writer of this passage is trying to get across to us. Remember the goodness of God so that you want to go back for more. Feed on his word so you'll experience him more and more. And then he says, come to Jesus. He is the source of all that is good and pleasant for the Christian. Come to him on whom we can build a life of service to God. Have you noticed how it always comes down to this though? With privilege comes responsibility. God has called us to be his ambassadors, to proclaim his mighty acts, to share God's love and mercy with those who don't yet know him. Again, this is why we need to be holy, just as he, he is holy, because the way we behave reflects on the God who calls us. So here's the challenge to us today. Have you encountered Jesus in a real way, in a way that's brought you into his holy temple? that's made you part of God's own people? Are you seeking to build God's temple in unity with those around us, around you? Are you feeding on the pure spiritual milk of his word? Are you seeking to get rid of those things that will trip you up or hold you back so that you can get on with living holy lives? Are you proclaiming the mighty acts of God by your character, by your words and by your actions? Are you living as one of God's holy priesthood, bringing God's good news to those who have not yet heard it? And finally, I came across these words last week. Jesus didn't die so that we could come to church. He died that we would become church. I'll repeat that. Jesus didn't die so that we could come to church. He died so that we would become church. Amen.
Coates family will now lead us in our prayers. Today we're going to use Pope Francis' five finger prayer method. First, we start with our thumb. It is the closest one to us, so we are going to pray for the people closest to us. God, thank you for our family and friends. May you continue to protect them and give them joy. May you heal those who are sick or having a hard time and may they know you are with them. Amen. 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 Next is our index finger or our pointy finger. We pray for the people who teach us, instruct us and heal us. They point us in the right direction. They need God's support and wisdom to direct others. Always keep them in your prayers. God, thank you for our leaders at work and teachers in schools as they start back in what is a very different situation with current COVID guidance and restrictions. Thank you for our doctors and nurses who help and heal us. May you give them all rest and clear minds. Amen. Amen. Next is our middle finger, which is our tallest finger. It reminds us of people in power and those who have authority in our lives. They need God's guidance. 
God, thank you for the people with power. May you give the Prime Minister and our government, police and military, the wisdom, strength and open hearts to continue with making the right decisions during this difficult time. Amen. Amen. The fourth finger is your ring finger. It's the weakest finger. It reminds us to pray for the weakest, the sick or those with problems. They need our prayers. God, strengthen those who feel weak, those who are currently struggling or in need. Help us to see them and offer help where we are able. Amen. Amen. Finally is the little finger, the pinky. Pray for yourself when you've finished praying for the other four groups. You will be able to see your own needs more clearly. You will be able to pray for yourself in a better way. So God, help us to learn your ways. Surround us with good friends and strengthen us in mind, body and spirit. Amen. Amen. Now join us in saying together the prayer that God taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. In your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I really hope that you've been inspired and encouraged by today's service.
As Elaine said, Jesus didn't die so that we could come to church. He died so that we would become church. Let's not forget the amazing privilege we have in knowing Jesus and in being stones in his house. So this week, let's each of us ask Jesus, what is he calling us to be and to do? And if you're part of St Wilfrid's, what is he calling you to do as we seek to be the heart of our community and to be disciples who make disciples of Jesus? Yes, it's up to all of us. It's not just down to the vicar. So please, if you possibly can, join our prayer hour. It's this Wednesday evening at half seven on Zoom. We are Jesus's church. We want him to lead us, particularly through this strange and, let's be honest, stormy time. Praying together is so important and never more so than now. I also love our morning prayer times. There's a real sense of God speaking to us. Each morning we look at a Bible passage and we pray. Do join us if you can. They're each weekday, half past nine on Zoom. As well as church online at 11, our simple Holy Communion services in our church building continue at 9am each Sunday. We do need to ask you to book. Details are on the screen. Now, if you've not been watching Faith Stories at 4pm on Fridays, you really are missing a treat. Do take a look and do tell your friends. It's on Facebook and YouTube. You can watch it at any time. And finally, this Friday at half past seven, we have our next online quiz. Do get involved and please invite your friends. Sadly, you do have to provide your own prizes. And a big thank you to Steve and Joy. I know it will be great fun. Now, if you don't have the Zoom logon details for any of these events, please do email me or get in touch if you've got any questions or you want prayer or want uh, some support from St Wilfrid's in some way. Please email vicar at stwilfridscowplane.co.uk May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, Fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. If you're watching live, do join us now on Zoom for coffee. i
salvation song Till the whole world hears what Jesus Christ has done Let the whole world hear what Jesus Christ has done We believe you are our freedom The highway to the Father's heart We believe you're our salvation Hear us shout it out We believe you are our freedom The highway to the Father's heart We believe you're our salvation Hear us shout it out Christ has done Let the whole